Stories of the Bible The Parable of the Pharisee and Tax Collector This is Jesus hey Who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world While Jesus was on earth He taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like walking on water oh, hey guys. and even raised people from the dead. Uh, wahoo! One day, Jesus told this story to some people who thought they were very good and looked down on everyone else. Two men went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, and the other was a tax collector. Tax collectors were hated by many people. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed this prayer. I thank you, God, that I am not bad like other people, cheaters and sinners. I'm certainly not like that tax collector. Ha <laughs> ha! I fast and give up eating food twice a week, and I give you a tenth of everything I earn. But the tax collector stood at a distance and dared not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed. Instead, he beat his chest because he was so sad, saying, God, have mercy on me, for I am a sinner. Then Jesus said, I tell you, when the tax collector went home, he was right with God, but the Pharisee was not right with God. Everyone who makes himself great will be made humble, but everyone who makes himself humble will be made great. Good morning and God bless you on this Wednesday morning. The name of today's devotion is Quitting the Game, and the game I'm talking about is the game of religion. And I love the parable that you just had a, had a chance to hear, where Jesus talks about these two different people that go to worship with totally different agendas. And I worry sometimes that for many people, and for any of us, if we're not careful in truly guarding our heart and our minds and our relationship with God, religion and the practicing of our faith can turn into kind of a game where the goal is not to actually live a life that is pleasing to God or actually genuinely good. The goal is more to get away with as much as we can and get as many blessings as we can from God and still be able to be free to do what we want. And the way you play that game is it has nothing to do with God's law. It doesn't have anything to do with truth and what real goodness looks like. It has everything to do with how you compare to other people. And you see here this story where Jesus talks about this Pharisee who goes and he, he's so pompous and so full of himself. And he says, you know, God, I do all these good things for you. And at least I'm not like him. And I don't know about you. Do, do you have a him in your life? a group of people or a type of person or maybe an individual that you look at and think, well, I may not be perfect, but at least I'm better than them. I think we all do it to some extent. And the reminder of scripture is, is really uncompromising. When we look at the word of God, when we really take home what its message is to us, it reminds us that all of us have failed that compared to the Word of God, we're all in the loser category. We're all in the condemned category. And we can spend here to eternity pointing our finger at each other and arguing about whose sin is worse. But as long as we're playing that game, we're missing out on what it means to have a real relationship with God. Now, I don't know if you remember, but at the start of this video during the introduction, it showed a, a boy playing with one of those virtual reality headsets. And it seems like, you know, he gets scared and he decides to take it off. And then he's looking around as though he's trying to figure out what's true and what's real. I think for many of us, when we decide to quit the game of religion and finally get real with God and real with ourselves, 
it's kind of like an awakening. We begin to see things differently. And when we realize that our relationship with God is open to us through Jesus Christ, and it's no longer about fearing and running away and trying to get away with as much as we can, because God loves us, he forgives us, and he calls us to live a life that is transparent, open before him, so that when we are in the wrong, God's spirit can say, hey, I love you, now let's get back on track. And when we are walking with him, the spirit can testify with our spirit that we are the daughters and sons of God, and he loves us greatly. His light is shining through us. Now the tragedy of playing the game of religion is that game only works as long as we feel that God obeys the rules. You know, we do our, our part. You hear it from the Pharisee. God, I give a tenth and I do this and I do that. These are all the good things I do, God. And therefore, God, you have to bless me. You have to protect me. My life needs to be kind of one of those charmed life because I've earned it. If that's the game you're playing with God, then I worry for your faith that one tragedy, one time where things don't work out the way you want, and all of a sudden that relationship with God crumbles. Now on the contrary, if you have a real relationship with God, and you know that he loves you even when you sinned, and you know that he loves you even when life doesn't turn out the way you wanted it to, you have a God then that you can go to and you can thank him and praise him in every good thing that happens to you in your life. But because you're secure in his love, not because it's a game of getting what you deserve, but it's because a loving relationship that God initiated with you, then you know you can go to him with all of your heartache and all of your hurt. So I'm asking you today, have you been playing a game with God? Have you been real? And if you have been, are you willing to quit the game and start a real living relationship with God today? I pray that God's Spirit work in your heart and grant you the grace and the incredible gift of knowing His love and knowing what it's like to live in perfect relationship with Him. God bless you today. Bye-bye.